Hackers and General Hackers, let's talk tactics. My name is Matt Kiley, and I am a principal security researcher here at Huntress. Today, I have three key findings for you from the recently released SMB Threat Report. And the main motif here between all of these three is blending in. So let's dive in. Key finding number one, percentage of Huntress identified incidents in Q3 2023 that included lol bins or lol bass is... 29%. So what are lol bins or lol bass? So that refers to living off the land binaries, scripts, and libraries. This basically means that cyber criminals will use what they find on the endpoint when they land there instead of bringing their own tools to do the job. And so really good examples of lol bins are things like certutil.exe and mshta.exe and msbuild.exe. All of these on the Windows operating system are legitimate programs that are used for legitimate things. But in the wrong hands, they can also be leveraged to further an attacker's campaign. So hackers in this case are co-opting these normal benign programs and using them maliciously. That's lol bins. Now that begs the question, why would an attacker want to do this? So wall bins are like active camouflage for attackers. So let's say a hacker lands on an endpoint and instead of building their own tool, evil.exe, and using that in their campaign, they will look for and find the programs that are already installed here and then leverage those programs in a way that is malicious to further their campaigns. To the untrained eye, these look like completely legitimate programs being used for completely legitimate purposes. Meanwhile, the attacker continues to carry out their campaign unnoticed. It kind of brings me back to my red team days. It's a question I often used to ask myself, why build and bring my own tools when I could use yours? Key finding number two, percentage of Huntress identified incidents in Q3 2023 that included some kind of built-in scripting framework is... 27%. And similarly, percentage of Huntress identified incidents in Q3 2023 that included PowerShell or WMI specifically is 25%. I really thought that was going to be higher. I'm surprised at that one. Now, you cannot talk about lol bins without talking about the king of lol bins, PowerShell.exe. And I guess the prince or the court jester or something, I don't know, of wall bins, WMI. PowerShell and Windows Management Instrumentation, WMI. These two technologies were originally developed to allow system administrators to have easy, programmatic, powerful access to be able to administer Windows operating systems at scale. However, that means that in the wrong hands, these become extremely powerful tools of nefarious activity. It's so powerful that entire offensive security frameworks have been built on top of PowerShell. An example of this is PowerShell Empire. And so that gives you an idea of just the potential for abuse that we're working with here. And it's also so powerful that in response to all of this PowerShell tradecraft, new technologies were developed like module logging and script block logging specifically to counter this kind of tradecraft. Now, I come from the land of red teaming, and so in my community, specifically regarding PowerShell, a lot of people scoff at it, and they say things like 2014 called and they want their tactics back. And yes, to a certain point, I do agree with that. I mean, in very mature, very advanced environments, using PowerShell as an attacker is a lot like trying to smuggle a bazooka through a metal detector. It's not going to work. But in the SMB world, in the 99% of companies that fall below that mature enterprise level, PowerShell is abused by attackers every single day, and it works. Small and medium businesses are often, unfortunately, ill-equipped to detect and respond to PowerShell tradecraft, so they are, unfortunately, easy targets for cyber criminals, and cyber criminals don't want to use their advanced custom tooling if they can just use something like PowerShell that's already there on the system. So PowerShell is still a relevant threat, and it's still worth our time and attention as defenders. Well, that's just about everything I've got for you, but if you're interested in learning more about this hacker shady tradecraft stuff, go ahead and read through the SMB threat report. It's chock full of this stuff, emergent threats and trends that we've identified, really interesting reading. So check it out there.